Hi everybody, it's Sam Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got something really different for you this week and I'm going to be showing you how to make your own clock. So this can be in your craft room, which is what I'm using mine for. You can have it anywhere else in the house. You can have these as gifts. You can have them as great craft fair um, projects to sell as well because they are very, very easy to make and relatively quick and inexpensive so again if you are going to have them for craft fairs I think it's all down to obviously you want to keep your costs really low at the beginning in order to make some profit so really really fun to do I've used the Fiesta Fever paper pack by Trimcraft it's just really fun and what I like about these is that you can change them so I'm going to make a Christmas version I'll have a spring kind of Easter version all those kind of you know seasons autumn winter summer anything you want and you can change this which again I think is a really nice thing to be able to do so I'm going to enjoy doing different ones of these over you know the course of the year it's about this one's about 11 inches in diameter I think so it's quite a nice sized one I've added this really fun pom-pom trim and then I've done my 12 3 6 and 9 and then I've just used these really nice kind of flat back gemstones they're kind of crackle glaze actually inside but they, I've had them for months and they worked really well with this particular one I do need to still add the stamp the word time there so it reads fiesta time but I'll do that and you would you'll see that in the photos anyway but other than that it's really easy to make it works perfectly it keeps time well and yeah I just think it's a really fun project and a nice way to use your papers in a different way so let's get straight into this tutorial so first of all obviously to make the clock you're going to need a clock mechanism now I've got this one here you can buy exactly the same on Amazon and on eBay uh, they're around about 275 350 some include postage others don't now the cheapest way I've seen to do it is going into your pound shop so in China we have a place called Daiso which is actually a Japanese brand everything in there is 10 kwai so that's a pound or a dollar something or a euro something it's really really cheap and you're not paying any postage you've got it there and then so it was a really it's actually not a bad little clock and I thought this would be plastic and actually it's glass so I'm going to see how I can incorporate that into my crafting as well because that's a lovely sized circle. But basically it was just attached with some screws just on the four points there. So I just unscrewed them and then everything fell out and then this piece here I just popped off. It's just a little pin. It just pops in. And then I just, that was on the front, this was underneath and just take it out. Nothing was glued, it was all very very easy to dismantle and that will work perfectly um, for my clock that I'm going to make. So I'm going to keep that because I may well end up doing something, well certainly the glass, I'm not going to keep anything else. The frame's probably quite handy as well, that would work as some kind of, I don't know, centrepiece maybe I could start to use that with, we will see, but that I'll certainly get rid of. But that's just a really frugal way of, um, you know, keeping the cost for this really, really low. Next you're going to need some really strong chipboard, so um, you know the two, two mil or above is kind of what you want to be having, going for, having, it's what you want really. Um, this here is about two inches, but this was from, <laughs> we brought a pair, um, a set of scales and this was in the packaging, so it was in a strong box but this was also inside and it's a perfect piece of white card and it's solid and it's really flat look it's, it's not warped or anything so that is going to be my base for my clock now this can be as small or large as you want okay this is a nice size I'm going to make it circular but I think that's going to be a good size although that is quite a nice shape actually isn't it that's quite a cool looking shape for a clock let's see let's see how we go next you want to choose the paper and how you want to decorate it now you can use um, the tissue paper and, and like decumash and actually um, decoupage your piece but I think I'm just going to stick with paper because I adore and I've got two sheets I just love this particular print I really like it it's from the Fiesta Fever um, paper pack but I think that's an all year round kind of print it doesn't matter you know I can bring that out you know this is going to stay up in my craft room so I, I really like that and it, it's going to fit on here perfectly once I cut it. I think I will end up going circular. Um, now I'm not sure whether I'm going to have this actually as my background 
or if I'm going to cut my numbers from this. I'm not sure yet, so um, I'm going to have a little think about it, but that's basically what you want to get to first. So get these are the pieces that you're going to need, and then I'm going to go through my um, number dies and start kind of thinking on my layout. Okay, so I've decided I'm going to stick with a circle actually for this one, just because of the idea I've got. I think it's going to work better with a circle and like an even, obviously, side. So I've just got my X cut circle cutter. I've set it to 11 again. You know, don't. I guess you don't really t need to take too much notice of the measurements as such because you'll make this however you want. But basically, I'm just going to sit this in the middle. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to cut right the way through, but it's certainly going to give me a good. Oh, it might help if I take off the uh, little blade cover there. Um, it's certainly going to give me a nice edge to to cut, and I will be tidying it up anyway. But I don't know. It seems to be. I'm really pushing down. You can see my mat's actually moving. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to be coming into shot in a minute. Putting all my might into this. Again, you might use a cutting knife or draw a circle and then cut it with your scissors. There we go. Whew. Right, let's see if this has gone through. Oh no, that's okay actually. That's perfect. It's given me, look, it's almost, I'm not worried about the back. It's ripping some of the backing off, but that's all going to be covered. In fact, that's what it's not gone through. It's not cut through that bottom kind of plastic um, piece, which is fine. I'm not bothered. Although now that's lifting a bit of a bit more than I wanted off. Let's just go back around that way. There we go. So now we've still got perfect. Move my mat back. <laughs> So there we have, and that is going to sit nicely. That's still a nice size clock. So the idea I've got is I'm now going to cut the same size circle out of this cardstock here. And then I'm going to cut a smaller one out of this. And I'm going to have my clock kind of coming out of that middle bit. I think I'm going to kind of go like that. I mean, I want to get those flowers in there, but because it's a circle, although if I'd done a square, then I could have got it like that. It's fine. No, because then the numbers will cover it. So the idea I've got is that then I'm going to do a smaller circle of that, which is going to sit over this. And then I'm going to cut the numbers out of this as well, but they're going to go on the plain bit, so the numbers really pop. So hopefully it's all going to work out. It's going in my craft room anyway, so I'm not too worried. But I'm going to have pom-pom trim all around the outside as well, like I did on my rosette. Um, so that's what I mean. I'm just going to be covering up all that edging anyway. You're not going to see it, but I thought that would be really fun. So I'm going to go and get all that ready and get it stuck down and probably get the numbers together as well. Um, actually, before I get right into that, this is when the X-cut um, screw punch will come in handy as well because you'll need to punch a hole right in the centre of this. Now, if you don't have one of these, then you can use a pokey tool or any sharp item with a foam mat or something behind and push through it yourself. But obviously you need to make a hole that is big enough just carefully take them up for this piece here to stick through. Now inside these, if I just take off the end, you've got three sizes and I think I've got one, my piece is broke that holds it in place in size so it just kind of rattles around. Yeah, perfect. That one there's the largest one and that is pretty much the same size as this one here. Okay, so now I just need to find the centre of my kind of clock here, so I'm just going to eyeball it, bring that down, it's about there. Again, I'm not too, too worried if it's a little bit out, as long as the clock mechanism goes round okay, and then just punch that probably a few times, yep, it's gone right through, perfect, and now that should, I might have to push it through a little bit more. Yeah, you're going to have to make it a little bit bigger. So if you need to make it bigger, just go slightly off to one side. And then slightly off to the other. I'm just taking little tiny bits. Like so. There we go. That fits perfectly. And then those will all go back on top once it's all put together. Okay, so I'm going to crack on and get all that done. 
Okay, so I'm just playing around for the minute and I've just lied down my number dies. These are the first edition number dies. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm just going to have 12, 3, 6 and 9 and maybe have, I don't know, I've got the, where are they? I have the, this is the Mexican Fiesta die set which is to go with the Fiesta Fever pack. And there's fun things like a cactus. I don't want to use the sugar skull because that is more for me, that's like Halloween-y, but you've got like a cactus and I don't know whether to have like a cactus as like number four or I could just have like the sombrero hat over there, the donkey. So I'm not sure. I'm just kind of, I think I'm going to die cut those bits and then see how it goes because this is so inexpensive in a year's time or six months time I can just take it apart keep the mechanism and make another base or keep this and kind of rotate them that's probably better actually not throw this away but rotate them so make different ones um, I need to pierce my hole again but I know where it is because I'll just go from underneath now this is the pom-pom trim and what I plan on doing is I'm just kind of sitting it right underneath so all you literally see is the pom-pom so I've got my hot glue on I just wanted to sit the numbers there and everything just to kind of see how it's all going to look but I think it's going to be really fun and I just love that I've made it so it's not going to go anywhere else in the house just in my craft room sort of fit in nicely but I think that looks really good when the pom-poms are really close up so I'm going to flip it over and stick that down and then what I'll do is I'll just cut another circle the same size of this um, just to cover just to make it kind of um, look a bit neater I guess um, but yeah, I think I think I might just do those three, um, sorry, four kind of number points. Um, so let's just flip this over. Now I'm going to have a hanging kind of nice, I want to have like a big bow or some kind of feature at the top as well. Um, so I'm going to flip it over, making sure what I might just do is pop a little um, very small piece of washi tape right at the top in the centre so that when I flip it over I know that this is the top because I'm going to have my um, join of my pom-pom trim at the top there as well not that you're really even going to notice that but I want to be able to pull this right in so it's just going to come in handy just so I always know where I'm working you know that I'm working from the, the kind of the top centre it's all kind of even so I'm just going to start to keep that down just bit by bit, as I did with my, well, whenever I use the hot glue, whenever I use this trim, just do bit by bit. And obviously remember, it's very, very hot. But I just want the balls just coming over the side there. I don't want you to see the trim or the kind of little um, bits that the pom-poms actually attach to. So if I pop that to one side, so I'm probably coming in about half an inch. I stick with that same kind of you know measurement then I'll know that they're all kind of staying in the same place I'm just going to carry on and go all the way around this okay so there is the kind of frame I guess the base of my clock I really love it I love that pom-pom trim I think that looks so good the back's obviously quite messy at the minute but once I cut another circle that will just go over the back of that and obviously the this mechanism piece will sit on there as well but um, yeah I really really beginning to really love it so now I'm going to move on to my letters I think what I'm going to do is die cut some in this same color I quite like the thought of having that kind of eclipse look so it looks like the numbers are popping out of this same like orange print um, but I'm also going to die cut some in the scraps of this as well um, because that may work as well I'm not sure but I want it to be a usable clock so I want to be able to see it as well but I do also want to create like a little scene somewhere or maybe some more going on here but you have to make sure you don't have anything too high because you don't want it to obstruct from your um, clock kind of pins from going around so I'll be back once I know what I'm doing <laughs> okay so I've die cut my numbers um, out of the kind of um, scrap from this orange paper and then I have got some of my fun foam which is here I've just got this orange color and then I've die cut the same numbers again 
So now I've stuck the paper ones on top of the foam and you can see now I've got dimensional letter uh, numbers. And basically when I now sit them on the same coloured card they've got a shadow so they actually lift and you can see now they look like they're framed, they look like they've got a darker outline. So yeah I just I quite like that effect, I think it looks good. So I'm going to get them stuck down. Then I've just hole punched the centre there and checked and that all fits in there fine. So I'm going to get my um, pins actually put in as well just so I can see it kind of more together. So I'm going to get that done. Okay, so my numbers are all stuck down, they look really good. They've got a nice bit of dimension to them, I really like them. I've popped my clock in place, so it's really secure, it's really, really snug on the back there. And it just pops off, so, you know, just feed through the back, and then just pop them on. Make sure they're all in the right order. You'll know that they are, because it will not go back in place if it's not, so, um, it's you know, you can't get it wrong really. And then I just need to pop a battery in, but I know it works anyway. Now I want to add a way to hang it. So I've got this really nice ribbon and it matches quite nicely with the pom-pom trim. I didn't want to add any more orange. And basically I'm going to have it like that so you can hang it on the top. But then I like the thought of having it continuing down the ribbon and having like some little tails sticking out the bottom. I'll just kind of tidy off the edges there. So I'm going to try that. If I don't like it, then I can just cut the ribbon off and just have it hanging from the top. But I quite like that look. So I'm going to give that a go and get that all stuck down. Okay, just so you can see me putting the kind of ribbon on the back, I've taken off this piece again because the ribbon I actually want to go underneath. I don't want it to go around and kind of, I don't know, create some bulk and just not look very neat because I am going to obviously finish this nicely so everything's concealed and then like I said I can kind of change it whenever I want. But I've already stuck the top one down so you can see how that is there and I really like that, I think that looks nice. And then flip it over and then I'm just going to kind of have it wherever it kind of naturally wants to fall and then I've got my glue gun, sorry my chair is really squeaky every time I go to make a video I think oh my god I forgot to put some WD-40 on it or something um, I'm now onto my blue glue sticks, I have run out of my clear ones I've just put it on my shopping list to go and grab tomorrow but basically I'm just going to run again, you'll see it change blue at some point um, just kind of obviously be careful because it's very hot but just squash out your hot glue all the way down there that's as far as I need to go, I'm not worried about doing any more there and then again just lift this one up I'm still on the clear, you might not see oh, the blue like so oh there it comes so I'll just let that all set okay I've just cut one of them there and then I'm going to try and line this one up I've gone a bit longer just in case I do make a mistake then I can go shorter I'm going to just light the ends there whenever you're cutting ribbon just I've got an old lighter and just very carefully just go along and you can see it, you just want to slowly melt the plastic because most ribbons will have a um, plastic in them which allows you to be able to seal the edges. Don't worry my camera is pretty high up, <laughs> there's no, there's no uh, worry of that hitting my camera. Um, and there you have the bottoms, I don't know I might, I don't know whether to actually do like flag tails or not. Let's just see what a flag tail looks like on this piece here. So if you ever want to do a flag tail, just fold it in half and then cut from the folded side down like so and then open it up and you get flag tails. So let me just hide that one, bring that one in. And do we prefer a flag tail or this one? Hmm, I don't know. Okay, I'm still playing around with it and I found these really nice flat back embellishments that I've got, which have got like a crackle glaze. Um, you can't really see it, you'll see it in the photos. Um, I've had them for years. It's one of those things I've brought and then I've actually, they're so bulky. They don't really work on cards because it's just, yeah, and they're actually quite heavy as well. Um, 
but they I think are going to work really well for this now every time I hold this up it looks better when it's not against this mat I think because this mat is a similar color it's just really throwing my eyes but actually when I hang these on my wall when I hang it on my wall I've just carefully stuck them they're not actually properly secure I do like it and it kind of gives me that one and two and four and five kind of markers as well so I think I'm gonna stick with that and get those stuck down I always on the backs of all of these there is the glue but I always put a little bit of my wet glue as well just so they really do stay stuck down so I'm gonna get them stuck and then I'm gonna just sit and look at it even more <laughs> and see it's still this line this is where I, I'm feeling it needed something um, yeah I don't know okay I'm gonna leave it because it is now 10 to 6 in the evening it hasn't taken me long to do this by the way it's probably taken me an hour max but it's keeping good time so I've had this ticking now for the last 10 minutes and it seems to be going around nicely so I'm pleased but I'm just going to leave it I think I might end up going to it maybe once I look at it on my wall I may find something later on and I will just update my pictures for you on Facebook and on my blog but otherwise I'm really pleased with it I love it I think it's really nice it's really fun and the fact that I know I can change this whenever I want is going to be you know the fun part about it really so an, an interchanging clock face I think that's quite cool so a really nice little addition to any craft room I think or any children's room you could really personalize this there's some great free downloads and you can print all sorts off but like I said that's the bargain for 99p or a pound or whatever you know um, from those shops is just brilliant so there you have it so I hope I've inspired you I'd love to see all your clock creations make sure you share them on mixed up crafters um, as I've said before it's a really lovely group and there's some amazing crafters on there they're making great things so please come along and share whatever things you make that I've inspired you by from my tutorials that'd be great but until next time as always please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel to see more thanks for watching bye